What's up guys, this is Coach Grant with First Down Training and today we're gonna to be breaking down how to run a perfect post route versus literally every single coverage. So we're gonna break down every single look that a DB can give you off the line, zone coverage, off man, et cetera, and how you guys can run a post route versus that look. So I hope this video helps you guys out, but also fellas, we are gonna be traveling out to 15 states across the country this year for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So next up on our tour, we're coming out to San Francisco, then Orlando, New Orleans, Charlotte, Dallas, the DMV, St. Louis, Honolulu, Boston, Cleveland, Austin, Seattle, Newark, Denver, and Los Angeles. So if you guys are local to one of those cities, would like to work with us eight hours total over the course of two days, check out that very first link below, fellas. We'd love to have you out to one of our camps this year. Let's get started with this video. So now, first coverage look we're looking at, looking at and again, like I said, there's a post route versus every single coverage that you are going to see. First one we're going at is inside shade press coverage, okay? So let's play this thing full speed then we'll break it down. So this wide receiver tax DB's leverage takes an outside release on a post route and is able to win on this thing. So let's talk about it. A lot of people will say that, oh, it's an, it's, it's a post route. It's, you know, sometimes on a dig route, any kind of inside breaking route, you have to always take an inside release when it's press coverage. Not true because we have to understand when I'm facing inside shade press and I have a post, this DB's sole responsibility is to protect the inside. He wants you to not, he doesn't want you to run the slant. He doesn't want you to run the post. So he's going to line up inside shade to take that away. His goal is to force you to the sideline because the sideline is his help. Now, since he's lined up out of the slot, you know, that's a long ways to the sideline, but we still can't force my release. I cannot try to force an inside release and try to get over the middle of the field because this DB will just get hands and reroute me. So what you want to do on this post versus inside shade press is you'd want to attack him. You would want to threaten him like maybe you are running a slant. Maybe you are running a drag because that can get him to either stop his feet or some cases he might keep his leverage and weave to the inside but he's going to keep his leverage and maintain that leverage if he's a disciplined DB. And that's what I'm trying to get you guys ready for. I don't want to get you guys ready for a scrub DB who's just going to backpedal and you'll have a free inside release. I want you to get ready for that disciplined guy who's going to hold that leverage. So we want to take what he gives me. You want to always, always against any type of press coverage, take what he gives you. You should be able to run any kind of route, an inside breaking route or an outside breaking route with either release inside or outside. So it's all based on the DB's leverage where we release release where we go. It's not based on the route. So if I'm running this post against inside shade, we already know I'm taking an outside release. Just like if I was running a corner versus inside shade, I'm taking an outside release. It's based on the defender's leverage and where he is. So when we take that outside release, my main goal needs to be what? needs to be to restack. So many wide receivers when they have that inside shade look and they have an inside route like a post, you know, they'll do what I say. They'll attack his leverage. They'll work him inside. But after the move, they will run away from the DB and there'll be a big gap between the two of them. And so when they try to run this post, they end up veering way over the top and they're covered. They're screwing up spacing and the timing is off. We have to try to get as skinny as possible with my release. So he attacks inside. You want to try to get skinny. Because what is your main goal here? My main goal is to restack. My goal is to get him trailing my back hip so I could give a rocker step. I could give a fake outside to run the post. Now, that's exactly what Hill does right here. He's able to restack. He's able to get this DB trailing his hip. So he makes it easy. He could use a move at the top. He'd go a little hip shift to the outside, a body fake stepping to the outside, and that could get the DB to bite, and we can win. Now, you also have to be prepared if the DB plays it well. Playing the wide receiver position is about having a plan, but also being able to react. So against that inside shade press look, sometimes we may not be able to restack. You know, maybe sometimes the DB's very quick. Sometimes he's bigger than us. Maybe he's getting hands. And instead of him trailing, he'd be up here. So what do you think you'd do? You'd take that inside hand and you would swat this DB by at the shoulder or the hip and break under him. But you maintain spacing. You didn't get jammed all the way to the in inside, screwing up the spacing and the timing with the quarterback. Take what the DB gives you. It's about the DB's leverage, not what route we have. Let's play this thing again full speed one more time, and then we'll get into an off-man coverage look when you have to run a post. So next example here is from Amari Cooper. So we got inside shade off man, and he has to run a post route. So this is a little bit different than when you have inside shade press. So when you have inside shade off man, obviously what we can't do is we can't, you know, attack his leverage and then burst up like, you know, and try to restack because there is only like a 10 yard post. You're making a break at 10. And if this DB sitting right at eight yards, 10 yards, you can't really do that. Right. So you have to attack 
his outside shoulder. So it's almost like a diamond release. Let's play this thing full speed. You almost want to treat it like you have a slant against inside shade press coverage, right? Because it, it's just like a further slant and the DB's further off. It's the same concept. So let's talk about it. So if we were to go here, some of you might be thinking, oh, well, if he's inside shade, anytime that he's inside shade, I gotta, I gotta stem him, right? Okay, I wanna angle my stem to the inside. I wanna square him up. That's what a lot of people say and try to step on his toes. But remember, why is the DB lined up inside shade in the first place? He's inside shade to protect the inside. He does not want us to run the post, the dig, the slant. He wants to force us outside, especially being on the bottom of the numbers because that's a dead giveaway that you're probably going to run an inside route. So what Cooper does here is he starts to attack his leverage at the start to make it maybe look a little bit more like a fade because my goal on this is to make it look like a fade so he will flip his hips open and run. So if I have to run a post route versus inside shade off man, my goal is to attack his outside shoulder and make it look like a fade. The goal is to get him to open up. So that's what Cooper does. He attacks his leverage, makes it look exactly like a fade, and he accelerates, right? His hips and shoulders are committed to the fade. He's running in full stride. He's actually running hard. Everything that makes it look like a fade, that's what he's doing. But he's angling the stem towards the outside shoulder because when that DB flips his hips, bam, I could put the brakes on and I could slip back underneath. That's what you would do, fellas. You wouldn't want to stem him and then try to make a rocker step because that DB's just going to keep his leverage and you're just going to run right into him. Treat it like it's a slant route versus inside shade press. If we go all the way back to the top, what's that release he should do? If that DB were walked down and he was right here and you had to run a slant, you would do a diamond release, right? Get him to flip his hips and then run. Same idea, same freaking idea. It's just a little bit deeper. This is a deeper slant and that's deeper coverage, but you know, obviously we call it a post. So let's play this thing full speed one more time. Great job by Cooper attacking to make it look like a fade, attacking that outside shoulder and winning on that post. Okay, so now, Next example here of this post route, like I said, fellas, we are literally going to go over every single coverage. Like that's the, how you can run a post versus every single coverage. This is a new style of videos that we're going to be doing. So we got a DB here, and this is more like a linebacker. Obviously, I think it's Isaiah Simmons versus Justin Jefferson. Complete mismatch. This should be easy work as a wide receiver if you're lined up on a linebacker and he's giving you some cushion. But sometimes guys are afraid of this because this linebacker like to be physical and he'll get hands. So we got inside shade kind of like, maybe three to four yards off coverage. Okay. So is that a situation where you would want to go run right at his outside shoulder and flip his hips? No, you, you wouldn't want to do what Amari Cooper did in this clip because it's too close. It's he's three yards. Like it's three to four yards. Like the post is at 10 yards. So you have maybe about six to seven yards where you could actually work to restack or actually get him to open up his hips. We can't just go right at his outside shoulder because that's what he wants us to do. This is a form of like, I would consider this maybe more so a form of press coverage, if you will. So let's play this full speed. So he ends up attacking him and then going at his outside shoulder, being able to restack and winning on that post. And that might be like kind of by design, a wider step post but let's talk about it right we have to anytime we get this type of coverage we cannot try to run away from the db whether he's inside shade or whether he is outside shade or head up i cannot try to run around him because that is exactly what he wants us to do what he wants is he wants jefferson to try to just go around him or go inside of him try to avoid him at all costs so he could get hands on us and just shove us and reroute us it's pretty much what that guy's job is usually especially if it's zoned sometimes this is more like man coverage obviously but we need to close the distance that is number one we need to make him uncomfortable anytime we have this look so he attacks him he attacks his leverage goes at him a little bit and closes the space and you see what he does he keeps his leverage to the inside when he's in man coverage like this inside shade his sole goal is to what protect the inside does not want to let jefferson cross his face run a slant run a post run a dig so he attacks him but he takes the outside release that's what we want to do now when you take that outside release what should be my primary goal stack that should be number one stack and if i can't stack what you think you would want to do you would want to throw by with your inside hand at the back of his shoulder or the back of his hip. So you would treat this exactly like how you would treat press coverage. It's just a little bit further off. And the only thing that changes is let's close the distance. Let's bring that line of scrimmage to him and then take the outside release. That's the key right there. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Jefferson being patient. I honestly think if this is, you know, maybe a kind of a, not a linebacker and a DB, he would need to close space a little bit more because when you make a move on a DB and there's like a yard or two of space and you're not just 10 times faster than he is, 
he's going to be able to recover. He's going to be able to take the angle and probably reroute you and stay on your inside hip. So make sure when we do that, fellas, we have that like two to three yards off coverage. We close the space, get into his cushion, then take the release that he gives me. All right, so now, how would you run a post route versus outside shade press? Now, this should be pretty simple. I mean, it should be a simple concept, but a lot of guys make mistakes on this because they think that the DB is just giving them the release. He is not. So let's play this full speed. This wide receiver decides to go with a wide step release, attacking his leverage, and then working to restack to run the post. Now, this is a little bit deeper of a post, right? This is more of like a skinny post, but let's talk about it. So when he goes here, he's got outside shade. Um, I don't understand why the DB's playing kind of shaded to the outside in this case, just because um, of how wide the wide receiver split is. You know, you see this is the bottom of the numbers, and he's past the bottom of the numbers. Um, usually he's not really a threat of a comeback route and out route because there's not enough room to the sideline. But DB's still playing outside shade, so we got to attack his leverage, right, off the line. My goal is not just to take off and run to the inside because that's what he wants. When he's outside shade, what does he probably have? Help right? But where's the help at? Is it the sideline or is it inside? It's inside. Because normally when he's inside shade, he doesn't have help inside. That's why he doesn't want us to run there. So he's trying to force a sideline. But when he's outside shade, he wants us to run inside because he's got help there. So a lot of wide receivers will just do that. They'll just take off and run. And that's exactly what this DB wants us to do. So on a post route, think about it. Like, let's draw it up right here. Like, let's say this is the wide receiver. He's running a post. We got a free safety right here. And then we got a DB who's outside shade. If we just take off and run, this DB gets hands. I get squeezed to the inside and then there's a very small window between that safety and me. So now let's talk about this. Let's say we're here and this DB's wide. We attack him. He widens. We're able to stack and then run the post. Now it's a bigger window between the corner and the safety. So that's what he does here. He decides to go with something we call wide step release. He uses this kick step. That's just a step for balance. That's not a false step. It's to allow him to throw to the outside and sell with his shoulders, sell with his hips, threaten this guy's leverage. Make it look like we're trying to run outside because that's what this DB is trying to protect. And that's what will get him to move. There comes a point where every DB has to move. And if we can run a release like that, I guarantee you that will get him to move. So now he takes the inside release, but he doesn't just widen it. He doesn't just go run the route. What does he do? He restacks. He stays skinny. He keeps a good pad level. He is going hip to hip with this DB so he can restack him and get him on his back hip. So now he's got, he can do whatever he wants. He can run a fade, post, dig, anything because he was able to restack, made a break, and went. He didn't just run to the inside and let him get forced into the safety. He ran a quarterback-friendly route, gave his quarterback a bigger window to throw this guy open or to put ball on the money so he can make a catch. And then there's that safety that we were talking about, fellas. Make sure we understand leverage. It's about leverage. It's not about, oh, the route that I'm running. It is about leverage. Let's play this thing again full speed, and then we're going to talk about how you guys could run a post route versus zone coverage and still be able to get separation. So now this next route we're going to be looking at here is uh, from CD Lamb. Now this is not a corner post. A lot of people were saying that this is a corner post. This is not a corner post. This is more like a vertical set move. So when we have zone coverage and we got a DB who's turned like this, you know, eyes to the inside, he's kind of outside shade. He's in that pedal stance. He's probably playing like a uh, cover three. Like let's say it's cover three, for example, just because he's playing zone, does not mean his leverage responsibilities change. The only thing that changes is that his eyes are to the inside and he's trying to identify any threats to his zone. But if he doesn't have any threats in his zone, it eventually turns into man coverage, fellas. You got to understand that. Zone eventually turns into man. Every type of zone coverage eventually turns into man. So when he's here, he's outside shade. Why is he outside shade? What does he have inside? He has help to the inside, right? So a lot of times, especially against zone, wide receivers, they'll be running this post. They'll just take off and they'll just go try to break in front of this guy. But when you just try to break in front of the guy, he's just going to get hands and force you where? right to his safety. So what CD Lamb does is he does something called a vertical set. So a vertical set is like a head fake inside. It's what you would do if you had to run a fade route against zone. You would run at him, fake inside, then try to slip behind. So he gives this fake to the inside, making this DB think fade, but what he's really doing is getting to attack his blind spot, aka his leverage. So DB in zone coverage, whenever he's turned like this facing the QB, he's got an area called the blind spot. And the blind spot just happens to be to his leverage. So what CD Lamb does is he attacks his leverage because what do you think that's going to do to the DB? Widen him, 
because he does not want to get beat where in zone and in outside leverage. He does not want to get beat deep into the outside. So when we can threaten his leverage outside, threaten that blind spot, that's going to widen him and that creates a bigger throwing window for my QB. So against zone fellas, when I have to run that, and then there's that safety that we were just talking about in the last example as well. So fellas, when we got to run a post against zone and he's outside shade, we want to angle my stem at the blind spot. Threaten his front hip, make him think you're trying to run around him so he'll widen creates a bigger window for the QB. And trust me, every QB will love that. Let's play this thing again, full speed one more time. Great job by Lamb pushing blind spot, get him to widen, and then winning on that post route. All right, fellas, really want to thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate. Leave those in the comment section below. And if you'd like to train with us this offseason in one of our 15 offseason camps, check out that link below in the description. I'll see you guys next time.